secondary tillage is what we're going to talk about now. So is, that, is there any more questions about the primary tillage and what we were talking about earlier? Sort of got the idea of how I'm trying to prepare the soil so that it's really wanting to grow crops. Yeah. Can I get the recipe one more time of the different seeds? Because I think I've gotten some and not all of them. Yeah, four gallons of buckwheat seed, a quart of crimson clover, and a few ounces of, say, daikon radish. For five buckets for a three-quarter acre? That would do about a, a third of an acre. Third. Yeah. Yes? Um, so to give you some, a specific example to where I'm at, we've got, um, we're in a floodplain essentially. Okay. So in the past, the, the farm that I kind of inherited or started working on in January, we always do raised beds. We do a lot of two-year crops, root crops. You used to get above the flood. Yeah, we're doing like valerian, echinacea, purpurea. So, so the flood will field, the, the walkways will flood, but the goal is that you're keeping these things up high enough so they still get oxygen and they don't die. Right. Um, so what we do to build the beds is we use a rototiller with a bed shaper behind it. Yeah. And we're definitely getting that whole, uh, the symptoms of kind of having cement, you know, in that second <laughs> year. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions of how we can kind of still mound stuff? And right. The, the, uh, look up a t the Italian spading machine. Yeah. It's better than the tiller by far. And uh, I got one in 1996, and I plowed a field to plant potatoes. And we got three and a half inches of rain in an hour. And I went up there and I thought, holy moly, this is going to be a mess. And it dried out, and I could stick my hand in that soil that deep. It yeah. Well, I started subsoiling, and that's really helped the fields get dry again, yeah. so we can like keep working. I mean, it's gone from, you know, ten days to three days yeah. before we can like drive a tractor. So you're you're seeing the benefits of this deep tillage. Then. Yeah, yeah. We bought a subsoil for like three hundred bucks, and it yeah. was great tool, best thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you're doing it where you're straddling, so your tractor tires aren't on the beds. Yeah, we've, we've got 69-inch centers, so the tractors drive through the rows, and those definitely get compacted, but the goal is to, um, you know, go out a, a perpendicular pattern, so we, we pretty much get the whole thing. Ah, I see. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that sounds neat. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'd love to talk to you about that echinacea. Uh, I've got some plants out there you can take on with you. Well, I've already, I'm past that point. <laughs> I, someone gave me hundreds and hundreds of plants. I planted them like four years ago, and they growed up, and they, I just need to know what to do with them now. <laughs> Is there a, a use for these roots? Uh, we, we use them in-house, so we have a use for them, but I don't, I've never, I've always grown like a couple just for wildlife. Yeah, yeah, I just, I know that they make medicine out of them, but yeah. yeah. So uh, now that we have a seed bed, uh, is the flat seed bed. Now is the time where we might want to do the thing that's hardest to do, and that is do nothing. We might want to let the rains fall on it, let it sprout up on some weeds, and hit it again with the arrow or the rake, uh, and do this so that we're not having this whole slush of weeds come up. So, and if the crop has big seeds, uh, and that would be our corn, squash, beans, potatoes, anything like that. You can go right over your row that you planted. And that's kind of hard to believe. I mean, it was really hard for me to, to get this in my mind that I, you know, could actually just go over what I just planted and not bother, not bother it. Now, you can't do this with lettuce or something that's just on the surface, of course. It's only for the ones that you've planted, you know, deeper. But it has really worked great for us. And at this point now, almost every year, for, for many years, we grow an acre to an acre and a half of potatoes. After we drop the seed and walk out of the field, we don't walk into the field till we harvest. There's absolutely no weeds. It can all be done mechanically. And that's really nice. <laughs> and then uh, I just went over all my butternuts this year. Now, so you just, I can't do this every year. So say, for example, I plant butternut squash, today and then in two days it rains and I can't get in there till three more days. Nope, <laughs> it's too late. The squash would have already sprouted enough or I would damage it. 
And I have damaged things too by going in there too late. So it's a matter of timing. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, raking over these uh, beds is a really beneficial. Yeah. And uh, 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 so uh, with potatoes and corn, I'll uh, harrow the field. And then when the potatoes just start to sprout up enough where I can see the row, I'll take the harrow right over those plants. And it knocks the fire out of them. And covers them up. And probably snaps some of them off. But guess what? Potatoes are able to keep sprouting up after that. And then, so this is another way to get in-row seeds from, uh, that are sprouting in your rows out. And we'll do this with corn, too. Once the corn gets up a little bit, roots run right over it. They have things called tine weeders. That, uh, oh, the, 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 the wires are like a number nine wire or something. They're, not, they're, just, they're very small, and they wiggle a lot. And they don't bother the crops. You can go over stuff. Um, old timers had what they called a rotary hoe. This was a... a it looks, their discs about this big, but they're fingers, and they have a little thing on them, and they, they roll just like this. It's great for breaking up a crust. Say you plant a corn crop, and it gets the downpour, and it gets that crustiness, you know what I'm talking about? And you can take one of these things through, and this is one of the few times we actually want to go fast through the field uh, because it breaks up the, the soil better and gets that crust gone. And, yeah, you may kill a few of the corn plants, but the good that it does far outweighs uh, that. Yeah. Um, so the farmer's primary concern is for uh, moisture in the soil. So again, this is farming without irrigation. So all the time I'm thinking about the water in the soil. That's like my main thing that I'm thinking about. I've got the life force down with the compost and, you know, I've put my minerals down, but I, I can't raise stuff if I don't have water. And I I've, I've get plenty of water. I don't want to water it. I want to use the water that comes every year. So I'm going to uh, talk quite a bit about water. There's three kinds of water in the soil. The first kind is our subsoil water, the water table. And so there's water under the ground uh, where it's always moist. So, you know, you can always dig down and find moist moisture. So that's what we're calling subsoil moisture. And then there's water that we call film water. So uh, uh, a, the soil uh, has a grains of soil. It, you know, looks something like that. These are grains of soil. So there's, down here we're going to say this is the water table. But then there's a film of water around each one of these grains. And this is much like the, the water that would be like if you dipped a stone into a, some water and pulled it up and the, the water adheres to the stone. Uh, yeah, each of these gr grains of soil has a film of water around it. So that's called film water. And then there's uh, a, a third kind of water. And that's called capillary water. And capillary water is the ability of water to go from here and follow these things and go up here to where it's dry. So what happens then is that as our plant is growing, it dries out the soil around its roots. So you have dry soil. So if I dip a paper towel into this water, the paper towel will get wet. Water will rise up through capillary action. So the same thing happens in the soil. So at the uh, subsoil water then 
follows the film water, and as the film water gets used up, that's what gets used up by the plants, and it gets dry, water goes from here and goes up. Yeah, so that's uh, capillary water. And so this uh, capillary action is how we water our plants, basically. So whenever the soil is moist, if after rain, and the soil's moist. It's compacted a little bit. So then what happens is that that soil dries up through the action of the sun and the wind. As that soil dries up, it soils, water's evaporating into the sky. So then more water comes from down below, hits the surface, and evaporates. I don't like this. This makes me mad. <laughs> I want every bit of water that's leaving my farm to go through transpiration of the plants. I don't want it just to be going up into the air. That's not making me any money. I want to grow plants because that's how my living is. And so every time after a rain, I have to till the soil just a little bit shallowly so that I can create a dust mulch on the surface and prevent the evaporation of soil moisture. So that's the reason that we cultivate and that we do tillage, is to prevent evaporation or check evaporation. So uh, when the wind and the rain strike the soil surfaces, we're losing moisture at the rate of up to an inch and a half of rain per week. That's enough to grow a crop. So if I can prevent that water from leaving, that water will be available for crop growth. Change the picture, see what we got. Yeah, so, yeah, so we're using no irrigation, no plastic, Okay, this is a, not a good picture, but it's illustrative of what happens when the soil is cracking and moisture is just pouring out of that soil and you can't see it. So it's something that it took me years to understand. But whenever the ground is sealed like that, moisture is leaving all the time. Uh, so uh, another instance is, say, say you have some dry soil and then you step on it. Okay, when you step on, see if there's a picture of a stepping on soil. Okay, this is us. So we're just hoeing, just trying to cultivate the ground. We don't step on hoed ground. We step, we hoe, and then we step back and hoe where we were stepping. And, you know, so we're not pushing the ground. So when we're done, the field's all fluffed up and there's no footprints in it. So go to the next one. When you step on soil, and then come back later, it'll be moist. Whereas the soil that's worked up around the edges is not. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, so imagine straws going from here down into the moisture here and water gets up to here and goes out into the atmosphere at the tune of an inch and a half per acre you know, of rain per week. You know, that's a lot of water. So what we want to do then is keep the soil loose so that's not happening. So when you come to visit my farm and you see these pretty gardens and you jump in and start walking in them, that's when I go like this, ah, <laughs> you're compacting the soil. You're gonna make me lose more water. We try to keep people out of the gardens, yeah. so. It's kind of a misnomer because a garden seems like something, a place where you would want to go walk. Well, that's, that's not right. <laughs> that's a formal garden with paths. <laughs> a, a cropland, you don't want to walk on it. You don't want to compact it. You want to keep it loose and fluffy all the time on top. And you can go on our farm after two or three months of no rain, major, major drought, scrape an inch or two of soil away and the soil's moist. This really does work. Yeah.
So, um, yeah, so uh, I just wanted to go into kind of detail about that because I think it's really important, yes. Have you always done no irrigation or did you have to? Yeah, yeah, I tried irrigating and I thought it was a lot of work and I'm trying to get out of work. Yeah, so, uh, and I don't think the vegetables tasted as good. Yeah, so whenever you irrigate, uh, number one, you're creating that moist thing where the soil, after it dries, after you've irrigated, moisture just starts evaporating and it starts crusting. And you're training your plant roots that there's moisture at the top. I want it to be dry at the top and have it moist below so that my plant roots are going way deep. Not only to get moisture, but then they'll also find other nutrients and stuff down there too. Yeah, it irks me to see somebody plant a tree and then just right around it, they've mulched. The mulch should be out here. <laughs> and encourage those tree roots to go out instead of just right there by the trunk.